Hey everyone, Charlie here. Welcome to an LTP Masterclass episode. Today we're gonna to go over the Yesu Joy of Man's Desiring by Bach. This is the Myra Hess version. There's a few versions, but this is the one by Myra Hess. Um, if you wanna, I'm not gonna play through it. If you wanna, I think there's a YouTube video of me performing it and I played in concert sometimes, things like that. It's a beautiful version. Uh, one of my favorites of this, uh, of this, I think it, it might be my favorite, of this, a favorite version, arrangement of this piece. Um, but it's a cool version and I thought I'd just go over some uh, some ideas with you if you guys are working on the piece or interested in learning it and things like that. Um, an LTP master class is a learn to play master class. Um, there's a bunch of other episodes up I think on different pieces but uh, basically a master class is usually when I go to like a college or conservatory and uh, I have a I teach a piano lesson in front of an audience to a student. Now there's no piano student here but I am going to just kind of play through parts of it and give some ideas about how I approach this piece. And so it might be helpful for you guys if you're learning it or working on it or anything like that. So let me know in the comments below, have you played this version? Do you like this version? Um, uh, what do you think of this version? Whatever, if you have any comments, questions, you know, do all that in the, in the description below. And uh, in terms of, uh, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, in terms of liking and favoriting and subscribing, that's right. Uh, be sure to do that. All right, so let's give it a go. This is the Yesu Joy of Man's Desiring by Myra Hess. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's short, it's only one, two, three, four pages long. And uh, it, memorizing it can be a little bit tricky just because there's a kind of repetitive parts and they change a little bit. But um, there, there's many ways of playing Bach. I've, pl I've heard people do it super fast. <laughs> And then some people play super slow. Uh, maybe not that slow, but I tend to like it a little on the slower side, but not dying, you know? So in this piece, um, everyone knows the Ace of Joy of Man's Desiring, so this is just an arrangement of it for piano. Um, you want to have that, it's almost, it's almost a religious um, kind of a, a calmness in it, right? So you don't want to be like all over the place. It doesn't really fit. It's not so much that. It's more almost like you can almost think of it as like um, a Gregorian chant in a way. Or, you know, maybe, you know, it, it, it's, imagine an organ playing it in a, in a big cathedral somewhere. And it's very kind of solemn, but simple in its beauty. Sorry about that, folks. We had a little bit of a technical issue and my camera fell off the light. So there we go. Let's get on with it. All right. Why am I talking like that? Let's get on with it. <laughs> All right, so, um, you know, so it's kind of this calm, uh, almost, uh, 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 you can almost think of like Gregorian chant or something. So. Uh, the main melody is obviously the most important. Keep it legato, finger legato as much as possible. In this piece, it's important the fingering because you want a finger legato. So even if with, without pedal, you want to be able to have it be as legato as possible. Um, that's what finger legato is. Finger legato is when you're legatoing with your fingers, not relying on your pedal. And then of course you can use some pedal. Keep the pedal clear. Throughout the piece, it also has this middle line. So you have the bass. And then you have the top. And then you kind of have this middle uh, accompaniment line that has almost a secondary counter melody in it as well. Or something like that, right? So. That kind of a thing. Sorry. Something like that. So it goes. It's a little faster than I usually played, I think, but you have that counter melody that would be nice to bring out. So let's, let's, let's continue on. Play the pedal about once every main beat, I believe. Whatever the left hand plays, basically. Hand, tenor voice, finger look 
Colorado as much as possible. Keeping the harmonies clear. And then it, this comes back. You don't want it to be so be controlled in it push down deep into the keys imagine the keys going further down than it actually does and when you're playing you know weight your left hand to the top almost tip it almost even more just weight it to the top so like the top almost plays before the, the bottom does I mean you don't want it to be don't do that, but like you can weight it to the top and it'll help uh, bring that out, the melodic line out. ways you can play this piece but bringing out those melodic lines um, especially when they're in the middle is important shaping all melodic lines tops and bottoms tops and middles um, and making sure that anything you bring out you play really rich and really uh, deeply not necessarily loudly but deeply you want that I don't know if deep is the right term rich you want a rich warm kind of a deep tone um, deep doesn't necessarily mean loud uh, mind you but uh, a, a warm whole tone. You don't want, sh you know, sharp. Yeah, that, that sounds horrible. You want to be real. You want it to be shaped, melodic, and very, very rich. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. What do you think of this version of this piece, the Myra Hess arrangement? It's a, I think it's a cool one. Um, let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you played it. 
uh, or any other versions that you've played. So uh, thanks again for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and all that good stuff on all the social media, everything's, and I'll see you guys in another video. Take care. Bye-bye.